Here we're looking at an example of the new custom funnel feature in Google Analytics. In this example, we are measuring drop off from our promo landing page through a product info page to step one of the purchase process to step two, all the way to the thank you page. We'll come back and look at this funnel in greater detail. But for now, let's hop over to the configuration and see how we have set up this funnel. The funnel consists of stages and each stage could have one condition or multiple conditions that satisfy the stage. In this example, we will keep each stage defined with just a single condition. So let's go ahead and look at our stages. Stage one, landing page exactly matches page that equals forward slash promo. Stage two, all of your visitors who got to the product page. Stage three, step one of the purchase process. Stage four, the payment page, step two of the purchase process. And we will go ahead and add our last stage just so we could see how the stages are configured. We're going to click add new stage. Label. Thank you. Whatever is meaningful. Add filter. We're going to go ahead and select page. You can select from a very wide range of dimensions in Google Analytics. Often your stage will be defined based on a page value. We have two options for our matching, exact or regex. Regex is a type of text notation that you could use to match a wide range of values. You could also use it for a partial match. So for instance, if you had multiple thank you pages and you all wanted them to match, if you had thank you version one and thank you version two, depending on an option, you could just leave You could just select regex as your match type and thank you would match multiple versions of the thank you page. But in our case, we are just going to go ahead and select exact. In some cases, you could specify exclude as the value in your first dropdown. But in most cases, we are going to leave that first dropdown on include. So you see how straightforward it is to define a stage in most cases. They can be more complex than this. You could add additional filters to the stage if you wanted to, but in a lot of cases, each stage is just going to be defined with one condition, one filter. Let's scroll back up to the top to view some of our configuration options. Notice, first of all, that we have selected funnel as the type of custom report. So we, were, we are in the custom report section of Google Analytics that you can access through customization in the top navigation. And we have selected funnel as our custom report type. And note that this feature, at least for now, is available only within Google Analytics Premium. For analysis type, notice that we can select between different stages can occur in different sessions and all stages must occur within a session. We will leave the default different stages can occur in different sessions because if we're going to take a more user centered approach, you basically want to know in most cases if most people, if most users have completed all stages in a funnel, whether or not those stages were completed within the same session or not. So we will go ahead and keep the default for analysis type. Let's go ahead and expand advanced options. For funnel type, we could have closed or open. The default funnel type is closed, which means that the funnel will only show users who entered the funnel at the first stage that you specified. We could select open as a funnel type. The open Funnel analysis can be a little bit more involved, so we will go ahead and keep closed as the funnel type in this case. Now for our metric selection between users and sessions. If we keep the analysis 
type set on the default of different stages can occur in different sessions, meaning that we are using user-centered analysis. Then the metrics that are shown in the funnel will be based on users and not based on sessions. If we did select it as analysis type, all stages must occur within a session, then we could base our metrics on either users or individual sessions in case a user completed the same funnel steps multiple times within one session. But we are going to go ahead and stick with analysis type as the default and metric as the default of users. Now for our last option, subsequent stage should follow. We are going to keep the default of at any time after a stage. And if you think about it, in most cases when you define a funnel, it's not necessarily super important that your users complete each funnel step one after the next. If a user takes a detour to another couple of pages in the course of completing the other funnel steps, that does not invalidate the funnel in most cases. So we will leave the default set at subsequent stage should follow at any time after a stage because that will make the most sense in the majority of cases. Let's go ahead and go back to our actual custom funnel visualization and look at the metrics and some of the other functionality. So back to the actual funnel report. Let's go ahead and analyze these numbers a little bit further and see what they are telling us. So in this case, we could see that 470,000 users hit our promo landing page. And of those users, all of those users are represented by the blue bar in the first portion in the first stage. And all users who abandoned the funnel, who did not make it to the following funnel stage, are represented by the red arrow below the blue bar. So we could see that 180,000 users did not make it to product info. In this case, this represents an abandonment rate of 38.42%. And we could see that 61% of our users did move on to the next stage, which in this case was viewing the product info page. And as we go through the stages, we could see that breakdown from stage to stage. So in stage two, the blue bar represents the 289,000 users who did make it to this stage after completing the first stage of our funnel. And the red arrow below the blue line represents the 183,000 users who abandoned at this point, who abandoned the funnel, who did not make it to the first step, the first page of the purchase process. And we can also see the percentages for this stage. 63% abandoned, 36% moved on. And as we go through the different stages, we can see also that the percentages of the users who got to the current stage relative to the number of users who began in the funnel is also shown. So when we see 61% at stage two, that means of the users who began the funnel, 61% got to stage two of the funnel. When we get to stage five of the funnel, we could see that 8%, 8.45% specifically of our users who began at stage one of the funnel made it all the way to stage five of the funnel, the thank you page. Now we're going to do some further analysis on our funnels and we're going to try to understand the factors that may be contributing to the completions or the abandonments at the different stages of the funnel. We're going to create two segments. Our first segment will be for all users who made it to stage three of the funnel, the first purchase page. So we're going to hover over our blue bar in stage three, and we're going to select create new segment. We're going to give our segment a nice and simple and meaningful name. We'll call it
purchase one reached available in any view create segment and we'll go ahead and create another segment as well for those users who did not make it to purchase page two so we're going to hover over the red arrow in stage three create new segment Purchase to not reached, available in any view, create segment. We're going to apply our two new segments in the built-in reports. So let's click reporting in the top navigation. Let's go down to mobile, overview. We're going to click Add Segment to apply the segments that we defined previously. We're going to select Purchase One Reached, Purchase Two Not Reached, Go ahead and apply those. Let's remove all sessions. Let's select percentage as the display type for our report. And now we see a comparison of sessions by device category for sessions in which purchase one was reached versus sessions in which purchase two was not reached. And you see that there is a higher percentage of mobile sessions in purchase two not reached. So there may be a usability issue on mobile devices that you want to check out to get more of your mobile users to purchase two. Now notice that this report is based on sessions, not based on users as our custom funnel is, but it's still a valid analysis and this could still apply even at the user level to optimize the process and get more of your mobile users to purchase too. Let's go ahead and just check out another report. We're gonna go ahead to our acquisition, all traffic, Source medium, always good to do analysis based on traffic source. Let's go ahead and select percentage here as well as our report display. And we could see that in this case, we're probably doing okay in terms of your different traffic sources from purchase one to purchase two. There's a little bit of difference in the Google organic piece of the pie from purchase one to purchase two, but that would probably be a little bit difficult to optimize for if you were seeing a sharp drop off from a specific traffic source that you could maybe control more tightly, you would definitely want to take note of that. Certainly if it's a paid traffic source, you would not want to see a high percentage of abandonment at the purchase to level or at any level of your funnel for a paid traffic source. A few final considerations for our custom funnel. First, Notice that we have gone to the maximum of five stages in a custom funnel. We can only go to five stages, which should probably be more than enough for most of your funnel scenarios. 
Also, you may have noticed that our custom funnels are similar in ways to the funnel visualizations that we can create for our goals. But notice very significantly that our custom funnels are retroactive, whereas our goals and any funnels that we create on top of our goals are not retroactive. So we could create a custom funnel and immediately go back for however far back we have data for in our view. So that's very, very useful. Just as another note, the custom funnels and the segments that we create based on the custom funnels are available to any other user who has access to your view with collaborate access. Otherwise, users with read and analyze access will not have access to your custom funnel or to your segments unless you explicitly share your funnel and your segments from the admin section. There is more on the collaborate access level in Google Analytics on the eNOR blog, e-nor.com forward slash blog. Tracy just wrote a, an interesting and comprehensive article about the collaborate level of access if you want to read more about that. And also in an upcoming demo, we will look at another very, very important function that we can perform with custom funnels, and that is creating a remarketing segment. So as an example, we can remarket to all of our users who got to step one of the purchase process but did not make it to step two. So we will talk about remarketing audiences in an upcoming GA demo. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about custom funnels or any other premium feature, please feel free to leave a comment or contact us directly. We're always happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching.